Hey folks, welcome back for another episode of Code Club. We have been working hard on building our R package to classify sequences using the naive Bayesian classifier from a paper published by Wang et al. out of Michigan State University. Even if that means absolutely nothing to you and you are already asleep, don't move. <laughs> because what we've been learning is a lot about software engineering and how we can um, use benchmarking and simulations and tests to find the most performant way to carry out a process. These are generally issues that people don't think about when they're doing their day-to-day -day data analysis of trying to make pretty plots to impress their boss. But we're making a package that is going to be working well, maybe not with big data, but with a lot of data and doing lots of manipulations. And so we want things to run quickly because we want our end user to have a pleasant experience. We don't want them to waiting around for days, waiting for something to process. In the last episode, we managed to get our code to run without setting my computer on fire using all sorts of benchmarking information we had learned about working with vectors and matrices and data frames. In today's episode, I want to turn our attention to working with strings. Now, in our benchmarking from before, we're looking at all these different data structures, I actually found that a lot of the base R uh, implementations were faster than things from like the tidyverse or uh, data table or some of these other uh, packages. Certainly they do have their strengths, but in general, base R did pretty well and certainly held their own. I'm curious if the same can be said when working with strings. In today's episode, we're going to be comparing the string manipulation functions from base R and the string I and string R packages. So we're over here in our studio now, and I'm going to go ahead to my benchmarking directory, which is where I put my vignette. I know it's not exactly benchmarking, it's not exactly a vignette, but hey, work with me here. All right. So just to reorient ourselves to where we are in creating a pipeline or a set of tools, a function, a package to classify our sequences, we read in uh, taxonomy information. We're using data from the ribosomal database project. We're also getting the sequence data associated with those genera, with those um, classifications. And then we're organizing them to make sure they're in the correct order. And then we basically make a data frame that's got our name, our sequence, and our classification. So I'm going to go ahead and load these up. And if we do head on sequences, we get our sequences, right? And then um, we go ahead and join that, right, to make seek table. And then seek table uh, is a tibble where, again, we've got our accession, our sequence name, the sequence, and the taxonomy. And then we run it through build Kamer database. So I am going to time this and see how long it takes because the goal of this episode is to see if we can't speed it up by perhaps using more optimized tools for working with strings. So we'll do system.time and then I'll put in uh, the expression that I want to run. And so this will run and it's not going to run actually because I haven't loaded anything. I was so excited to get to this that I forgot to load all my stuff. All right. So we got to make sure everything's loaded. I heard you. I just was ignoring you when you told me to go ahead and load all my stuff. Okay. We'll try this again. This now runs. I think it's going to take about two minutes to run, but like I said, um, we'll see how long it takes and I'll be right back. So yeah, that took about two minutes to run. One of the problems with doing this approach is that if I were to go onto my computer and start using stuff or some background jobs were to start running, then the time would get thrown off because uh, it's not guaranteed to be running this function at full tilt with all RAM, with all the processor uh, that it has access to. But anyway, for relative purposes, this is, this is pretty good. I'm gonna write this down that the user time was 120, we'll say 121, and the elapsed time was, I'll say, 1.30. Um, I think the user time is how much time the computer is using, whereas the elapsed time is kind of like the, the clock time, right? So, you know, two minutes and nine seconds or two minutes and 10 seconds ago, I started running this. Okay, so that's our benchmark. And we're gonna try to do better than that by again, improving our use of string functions. So where are our string functions? We're gonna go into our R, uh, directory and to Kmers. And what I want to do is catalog all of the different cases where we're doing some operation with a character or kind of as I colloquially call them strings. So I'm going to make a open script. And again, I'm going to kind of scan through here, looking at all my different functions, looking for a function uh, that I'm calling from base R that is doing something with characters. And so the first one here is in the function get all kmers. And this is where we're trying to calculate the total number of kmers using nchar. 
And so I'll go ahead and put that in my list. And I'll say this is in get all cameras. All right. And so then again, scanning down through here, I, I also see that it's in get camer, right? Uh, and so we'll add that. So and char, let me see if it's anywhere else. Uh, yeah, it's only in those two functions. And then I see I've got a substring function. And this is where we were taking our sequence. And then we're taking a start position and an end position and extracting that. So st sub and so sub str is in get camer. All right, let's see if it's anywhere else. Uh, nope, that's the only place I think. Yep. And so now in seek to base four, there is a variety of functions also. And so I see there's two upper. Uh, so we'll say two upper, and I'm also going to include two lower. And then what else? Are there are some others in here. G sub for replacing non ATs, Gs, and Cs with an N. So I'll include G sub. And then char TR. And so char TR is how we converted ACGT to 0, 1, 2, 3 to go from DNA space to base 4 space. So char TR. All right. And so let's see if there's anything else we see in here. And that all looks good. Nothing in here where we're calling functions to work on a character vector. So down here, we do have these functions for converting our strings to factors and then getting numbers out of them. But um, th this is a different type of operation. This is more of a factor based operation where we're getting out um, a number associated with the position. Again, a factor is a numeric vector that has names attached to the values in that factor. Okay, so I'm not going to worry about those. And we'll come back over to our untitled file now. And I'm going to do some benchmarking in here with our various string functions. So I'll go ahead and do library micro benchmark. And we're also going to load two packages. So we'll do library string r. So string r, it's not string r, string r. And then a library string i. And so both of these packages have tools for working with strings. String R, as I understand it, is built on top of string I, and I think, again, has some implementation differences to make it a little bit easier to work with. We're going to start with uh, nchar with the goal of um, calculate the length of a string, right? And so um, I'm gonna go ahead, yeah, we'll go ahead and get us some space here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and create a sequence and so I will do that by creating a vector of uh, A, T, G, and C. Also do my set seed uh, for reproducibility's sake, 1976, 06, 20. All right. And then from this, we will do, do a sample. And I always get my syntax on sample wrong. <laughs> um, so I'll do size equals 1500. Um, I think this is right, actually. I don't think, I think I've got the positions correct. And then we'll do replace equals true. And so then this gets us a vector of ATs, Gs, and Cs. That's 1,500 units long. And then we'll go ahead and uh, collapse this down. So we'll do paste and we'll do collapse equals nothing. And that collapses it down to a sequence, right? And so I will go ahead and call this sequence. And maybe I'll put this on two lines so it's easier to read and add some white space. All right. So this is the sequence that I'm going to be using for a lot of my work. And of course, if I did nchar on sequence, I get 1500. So that's working already, right? Um, cool. And so this I will call base str length as a function. I won't have any arguments for it. And then we'll do that. And then we'll do micro benchmark on b str length as a function that runs. Um, oh, and I didn't load the function, which of course I always forget to do. And so there we go. Uh, and so this is in microseconds. It takes a median of about one microsecond, 1,000 nanoseconds, to carry out using uh, the char function from base r. Now what we'd like to do is look at using tools from string i and string r. So both of those packages have a str length function. So we could do str i length on, I guess I'll write str length on, let's say, sequence. 
And again, that returns 1500. And so we could also do str length, and that will also return 1500. So again, I'll call this, um, I'll call it i for a string i, str length, oh, and I don't want the parentheses, uh, function with that. All right. And then we'll also do a uh, string r, uh, I'll put the r <laughs> uh, for str length function on that. Great. And that. Cool. And so now if we go ahead and add these two functions to our micro benchmarking, uh, we'll be good. And so again, this is r not i. So we'll go ahead and run that. And of course, <laughs> pat, pat, pat. All right. Got to get those loaded. And so what we find right off the bat, of course, is that the base R is slow, which is kind of surprising, right? Because <laughs> everything we've been seeing is that base R is sometimes faster than we find tools from the tidyverse. And so what we find is that I, the string I implementation of str length, is actually faster than the string R version. So I'm going to go ahead and swap that in. So we'll come back over to Kamers and where we had n char, I'm going to put in uh, stri length, okay? And then we had another um, n char here, right? Save that. I'm going to test it. And that failed. Why did that fail? Ah, it couldn't find it because I have to tell it that it exists, right? And so I need to import the uh, the function from the string i package, right? And so again, it's going to be at import from, uh, and then the package and the function name. So string i, and we're going to import stri length, and I'm going to add to this stringi, so string i, with the double colons, and I'm going to copy this and bring it down here, uh, and I guess I brought along a little bit more than I thought I would. And so then we'll also, um, well, we've got the string i there, and then we'll append to the front the package name, save it, now let's test it. And that passes, wonderful. Again, the beauty of test-driven development is I can do some refactoring, rerun the test, and see that it still works. So we're good. I can then update my document uh, documentation, it'll run that, and it'll update the information. And then if I look at my description file, um, that doesn't get updated, which kind of surprises me, um, but my namespace does get updated, right? So now it's saying import from string i, the string length function. Okay, so cool. All right, so next. <laughs> um, now we're ready to look at uh, the substring. And so remember that we had a sequence, say it's 1500 letters long, uh, or in our case, zeros, one, twos, and threes. And we wanna pull out eight word chunks uh, from that, right? And so we did that in the get kamer uh, function. And so what we can do um, is go ahead and we'll say um, get substrings from a uh, string, right? And so this is in the get kamer function. And so with sub str, where we saw this was again get kamer, and that was this function here, right? And so um, I'm basically, I've got another function that's calling get kamer uh, here, right? That loops around um, all values of get kamer. And so what I will do is basically reproduce this, okay? I will then grab uh, some of this code and I'm gonna actually grab most of it and I'll paste it over here. And let's move this up here. So this I'm working on the, the substring version, right? And so if my X is sequence, right? And then um, kamer size, I'm gonna hard code to be eight. And then my n kamers will be 14, 1493, which makes sense because it's 1500 minus eight plus one, 1493. And then I'm pre-creating a character vector that is that many units long. And then we're going to loop over all of those kamers. And I then am going to directly plop in get kamer, which was here. And I don't need this kind of checking code. I'm gonna go ahead and grab the sub str. Um, and so we'll go ahead and pop that in like this. And um, again, it's going to start um, at position i, 
uh, and go right. And so we're going to index increasing i, and the last unit will be i plus camera size minus one. Right. So basically, the last thing will be element fifteen hundred. And so if we run this again, camera size should be eight. All right. Now if we look at seek camers we see that we've got, yeah, 1,493 uh, different camers. It excludes the last 493, but shows us the first thousand. Cool, okay. So I'm gonna call this B underscore sub str, and we'll do function, and then we will uh, wrap that in our cozy curly braces. I'll go ahead and load <laughs> B sub string, uh, and then we'll do micro benchmark uh, with B substring, run that, make sure it works. And this takes uh, basically a second, right? Uh, so 1,054, that can't be right, microseconds. Oh, it's a, it's a millisecond, not a second, a millisecond. Okay. So one of the things that I found when I was doing a little bit more research on uh, substring uh, is that if I do str, sub str, and look at the help page for that, what I find is that there's actually two functions. There's sub str and sub string, right? And so what this allows me to do is to um, basically do the same thing two different ways. So we've been using sub string to extract basically a single value, whereas sub string allows you to uh, get all possible values, right? And so what we can see would be different here would be if I were to say, uh, sub, uh, sub str on sequence, and say I did like one colon 10, and then like five colon five, um, 14, that I get uh, the, the value, the substring um, between positions one and five, right? And so if I again look at sequence, and I look at the first, yeah, the first five positions are those, right? And so it's ignoring the stuff with the colon, but, <laughs> If I do instead sub string, I get all possible values, right? And so this sub string is basically doing what I was trying to do up here with the sub str function. Ah, did you know that? I didn't. This is news to me. So that's really cool. And so again, what we can do is we can use the sub string function to go from one to um, basically n kmers. And then we'll go from n kmers to the length of my sequence. And so again, we'll do uh, this, but really I know it's 1500. So I'm gonna hard code in 1500. So this wasn't what I was expecting. It's giving me some type of substring, but not what I wanted. Um, and I'm noticing I'm using n kmers rather than kmer size, which is eight. So now when I do that, I get all of the 1493 eight mers, right? Cool. So we'll then call this b underscore sub string, uh, and we'll define that as a function. All right, and we'll close that in, and then I'll be sure to load that. And now I can add this to my micro benchmark b underscore sub string, guaranteeing you that it's faster. <laughs> oh my gosh, it is 200 times faster uh, than what I was doing with sub stir. Right? Wow, that's that's blazing fast. So. Um, or at least relatively speaking, it's blazing fast. Now we need to see what it will do with string i and string r. So I'm actually gonna pull this n kmers calculation out because I noticed that I had that in my base substring, sub, base substr, uh, but I didn't have it in these others. So if I define it up here, um, that might make it a little bit more of a fair comparison. And we see that, yeah, it didn't really make a difference. Now we're ready to go to using the string i and string r version of this. The syntax is gonna be largely the same as what we saw with substring from base. Uh, slightly different function name, of course. So we'll do string i, uh, colon, colon, and it's gonna be stri underscore sub. Um, you'll notice as this tooltip comes up that there's a stri sub and stri sub all function. Um, there's a subtle difference between those. If if I use STRI sub, I can only give it a single character, a single uh, string, right? If I use all, I can give it a vector of strings and the output then will be a list. And so the, the practical difference is what, whether the return value is a vector or a list. So with STRI sub, it's gonna be a vector 
And so if I had done all, then we'll see a slightly different output. You can kind of see a space here between the prompt and the last of the output. Uh, and so what that is telling me is something is a little bit off. And so what you'll notice at the top of the output then is the double bracket one, indicating this is the first element of a list. Of course, our list here only has one element. But again, if sequence had been a vector of strings, then we would be getting out these k-mers for each of the sequences and each sequence would have its own slot in that list, okay? But of course, we want stri sub, and then we'll also do the string r version, which is again, very similar. And we get the same output. And again, has the same type of interaction with vector of strings versus a single string. And for our purposes, we're using a single string. Okay, so again, we'll do i underscore substring, a function and get that in its nice curly braces and then r substring all right and get those loaded okay and then we'll go ahead and add that to our micro benchmark again the i substring and r substring running that and what we find is that sure enough the i version of this is much faster than uh, the base substring and really even the string R. The string R is a little bit faster, but not a whole lot faster than the base version, but that the string I version is quite a bit faster, maybe about 25% faster than either of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and implement string I string sub in my kmers file. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove my get kmer function because uh, it's unnecessary, right? It's basically adding work. Uh, so let me make sure that this is the only place where um, it was being used. And yep, that's the only place. So let me go ahead and grab my test and I'm gonna look for where I used get kmer. And so yeah, it was this test here and I'll go ahead and comment that out. I'm commenting it out rather than deleting it because I can always go back and uncomment it <laughs> um, if I need it later. Uh, whereas I can't quite undelete it very easily. All right, so we'll go ahead now and modify our get all kmers function. And basically what I'm looking at is modifying these four lines of code that I had used with a for loop. And so again, the syntax is gonna be largely the same. So I'm gonna copy it down here and remove the comment. And we'll also remove these indexes. And it won't be get kmer anymore. It'll be string i colon colon str i sub, okay? And so I need to add this up here to my imports from and I'll remove the argument names here, and we'll need to modify the values a bit, but it's the same idea where we've got a sequence, a start position, and end position. So the start position isn't gonna be i, it's gonna be one, and it's gonna go to n underscore kmers, and then we're gonna have it end at starting at kmer size and going to seek length. Of course, we don't have seek length, so we need to define that. So I'll go ahead and do that up here. And that is going to be this thing, right? Where we use str length on x. And then we'll go ahead and plop seek length down here, right? Cool. And that should be all good. I'll go ahead and save that. I'll go ahead and load everything for good measure. And then I'll go ahead and do document to make sure everything looks good. Um, let's see, kmers lines 54 to 62. It's probably this. Yep, it's my get camera function. I'll go ahead and remove that. I think we're in a good spot. And I'll go ahead and then and run document again. That looks good. And we'll test. What do you know? It passes. <laughs> That's great. So now I'll feel good about going ahead and removing this code. And let's go ahead and get this formatted nicely. And I'll go ahead and remove the commented code from my test. And I'll test just to make sure nothing happened <laughs> in all my fiddling. All right, back to our benchmarking. All right. so. Now we're ready to think about um, to upper and to lower, which we use to upper in seek to base four. We wanted to make sure everything was the same capitalization uh, because sometimes sequences come in in different uh, capitalization. We just wanted to standardize everything. So um, I'm gonna, so we had sequence, uh, which you'll recall sequence is all caps, right? And so I'll call this sequence underscore upper is sequence, right? And then we'll also do um, a lowercase. So sequence lower, and I'll say to lower on sequence, okay? And so now if I look at sequence lower, I see that's an all lowercase. And so 
I'm going to try a couple different functions. So we'll have a two upper function. So this will be b underscore two upper function. Um, and I'm going to have it take an argument because I want to give b to upper both the uppercase and lowercase version to see if that impacts uh, its performance, right? And so we'll then do two upper on x. And then we'll do the same thing, but with two lower, right? So instead of two upper, we'll do two lower and uh, replace that, good. And then we'll go ahead and do micro benchmark and we'll do b to upper and we'll give that sequence upper and then we'll do the same thing, uh, but we'll give it sequence lower. And then we'll take these two functions uh, and copy them down and we'll do b to lower uh, on the same functions, okay. So remove that extra comma, run that, and of course, uh, so what we find then is that taking an uppercase sequence and making it uppercase is the fastest. If we take a lowercase sequence and make it lower, basically don't touch it, uh, that actually is slower than taking uppercase to go to uppercase, which is weird. Um, but converting between the cases is about the same amount of time. So again, this is using base R. I'd like to see it in string i and string r. So for string i, it's gonna be string i, stri, trans to lower um, on, let's say, sequence upper. And again, that gets us our lowercase. Uh, so we can go ahead and put an x in that. And then the same idea for to upper, right? And so I'll rerun that function back here. Uh, so I'll do to upper, to upper, and then here I'll put lower. Cool, and that converted that nicely. And so here we can then do i to lower function x. All right. And then i to upper. And that's good. And then the syntax for string r is, again, as we've seen, the same. So we'll again do string r, and then here, uh, string r, and then we'll remove this i uh, with the string, okay? And of course, we will load all our things. Uh, and I'll comment this, so I'll, I'll say uh, to upper and to lower. And I should say, like, it's worth trying the to lower aside from the to upper, because who knows, maybe with one of these packages, it'd be faster to have everything be lowercase. We don't know, right? So now we need to go ahead and copy these down. And again, this is going to be I, and then we'll copy again, um, and we'll make this the R version, the string R version rather. It's all R. All right, we run that up, oh, and I got a little bit ahead of myself that I realized that it's actually um, uh, str to to lower, all right, and uh, stri to upper, okay. So anyway, the nice thing about having this all be functions and scripted is that we make a couple changes and we're all off to the races again, good to go. All right, so now let's look at this. <sighs> okay, so again, we see our base R um, ranges between like eight and 33 microseconds, whereas <laughs> string I between like four and eight and a half microseconds. What I notice also with the string I and the string R is that uh, lower to lower, upper to upper uh, isn't different, right? And lower to upper and upper to lower isn't different in terms of speed. But string I is um, a bit faster, again, maybe like 25% faster than string R. Again, none of these timings are anything you would ever notice when you're using string R or string I or base R for doing a run of the mill data analysis. But because we're doing this thousands of times, <laughs> it, it, it gets noticeable. All right, so we're gonna use the string I version. And so again, uh, it doesn't matter if we go to upper or to lower, so that's good. And so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and we'll use this function to replace our to upper call over here in Kmers. And so again, if we look for to upper, there it is, uh, I can go ahead and replace that there. And then I can add this tag to say import 
uh, from, uh, and we'll say string i, and we'll replace the stri trans to upper. It's kind of a bad name compared to uh, stri to underscore upper. Let's just, I don't know, whatever. It's a little things, right? So that's cool. We'll go ahead and save and test. Passes wonderfully, all in good shape. And now we want to turn our attention to this G sub. All right. And so we want to replace non ATGC with a N character. All right. So again, we have our sequence, right? That is an uppercase. And um, we might want to, uh, we'll call this a good sequence. So sequence good at sequence. And then we'll do sequence uh, bad. <laughs> It's not really bad, you know. Uh, so we'll do a sequence good, and then we'll do paste zero with that and an R. And so what this should get us is a string with an R at the end, but if I define the thing, I think I'm just tired, right? Sequence good, absence sequence, oh, right, because I've got sequence good equals sequence good. I'm clearly getting tired. All right, we're getting there. So sequence bad has an R at the end. And again, what we want is that R to get converted to an N. And so it'd be good to have a good sequence that doesn't that has all A, T's, G's, and C's. And so we can see, um, basically, if you don't have to replace anything, what does the performance look like? If you do have to replace something, what does the performance look like? So we had used G sub. And to remind you over here, um, we did this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and bring that over to our benchmarking. And so again, we have, um, you can think of this as like sequence good, right? Um, or sequence bad, the bad, that R now becomes an N at the end here, right? And so we'll then do B G sub of function. Um, and we'll do X again, because we're gonna have uh, two uh, possible uh, strings to give it. And so again, here I'll put X. And so now if we do B G sub with uh, sequence bad. Yep, that gets turned to an N. Okay, so we'll then do micro benchmark with BG sub on sequence good, and then BG sub on sequence bad. So we see that the timing is a little bit different, that having to change that R to an N adds about five or six microseconds uh, to the whole thing. So it has to do something. So the string version will be string I stri replace all and actually we're going to use the char class because this is going to modify a character class um, and there's again i think this is a point where the string r implementation interface is a little bit easier to use and so we see that we give it the string the pattern and the replacement and so the string will say like for now sequence bad the pattern will be um yeah will be our not a t g or c and then uh, we'll replace that with an N. And so we see, sure enough, that gets turned into an N. And so um, if we want to do this with string R, again, be string R, we'll get rid of that I, and then we don't need this char class, um, but this does the same result, right? So I'll call this I replace a function with X, okay, and then um, actually, I don't want sequence bad here. I want X, right? And there as well. And then here I'll do R replace with X. All right. And then we'll make sure these are all loaded. And then we'll add them to our micro benchmark. All right. And then we need to do I replace here and R replace there. And I think I did load everything. Good. <laughs> and so what we find is that, again, string i with the replace is faster than uh, base or the string r version. The string r version is pretty similar in performance to the base uh, g sub. Um, so that's, that's interesting. Again, um, we're going to go ahead and use that uh, stri replace all car char care class <laughs> um, in our kmers. So we'll come back up here and we'll plop that in. And remember though, that our X needs to go first. Okay, our string needs to go first. 
So we'll go ahead here, and I think the argument was string. So with these new base R pipes, you have to name the argument that you're putting the placeholder into. This is getting a little bit long <laughs> for uh, across the page, so I'm gonna go ahead and break this up over a few lines. So we'll go ahead and save that. I'll also go ahead and add this to my imports, and we'll do document on that. Everything's updated. Let's go ahead and save and test. Passes, awesome. One left, the char TR. I'm really curious to see what all this changing is doing to our performance, but we got one more to do, the char TR. Okay, and so we need uh, to convert A, C, G, T to zero, one, two, three, okay? And so before, we used char TR to do this, and again, we can use the sequence function, so if we did char TR with uh, sequence, uh, the old would be a, c, g, t, and the new would be 0, 1, 2, 3 on sequence, and so we get our base 4 string, right? And so this will be b uh, char tr function. No need to take any arguments, right? We'll go ahead and get our micro benchmark started with micro benchmark, uh, and we'll do b char tr running that. We see that it takes a median of about nine and a half, nine point six 9.6 um, microseconds fast, but let's see how fast it is it compared to string i and string r. So I wasn't able to find a string r version, but string i uh, has a stri trans char function, which translates Unicode points in each input string, which isn't really helpful. <laughs> um, again, we'll give it our string of sequence and then our pattern and our replacement, A, C, G, T, and 0, 1, 2, 3. And we see that we get the same string out uh, that we got back here, right? We can kind of confirm that, that the last, I don't know, seven or so digits are 1, 3, 1, 3, 1, 1, 0. Cool. All right. So we'll go ahead and make this I char TR with function here, right? Pop that over. Um, like I said, I couldn't find a string R version that is like this. Uh, what we've been finding actually though is string R is slow compared to string I. If I'm missing something that you know about, please by all means let me know down below in the comments what that glorious function is from string R. Running these benchmarks, we find again um, that the, the string I version is about 40% faster than the base version. So I'm gonna roll with that. I'll go ahead and grab uh, this and take come over to my kmers and replace that and this argument is str and I think It doesn't matter where you put it if you're naming it But I'm gonna go ahead and put it up here in first and I'll save and then I will also um, add this um, the translation uh, Street trans char <laughs> all these things are mouthful um, and update my document and then go ahead and test fails. How could you possibly do this to me? Why is it failing? Um, oh, it doesn't like my arguments. I think it's supposed to be pattern and replacement. Uh, we'll go ahead and let's see, what are the arguments here? Pattern and replacement. Okay. Pattern replacement test. Awesome. It passed. Cool. <laughs> I'm so glad. I will go ahead and save this benchmarking into my benchmarking directory. And so I'll call this uh, benchmark uh, str. So you'll be able to find it. If you go down below in the show notes, feel free to add things, change things, use different length sequences, whatever you wanna do. Let me know if you find something different. Um, I then need to go ahead back to my vignette and we are going to go ahead and rerun this. I may have changed some of the values of some of these along the way with all my other testing, so I'm gonna reload those. And then in here, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this into system.time. Oh, and I forgot to load everything, so I'll go ahead and do that. Holy cats, that's fast. So the user time was 8.666 seconds. Um, that compares to 120 seconds at the beginning of the episode. Um, the elapsed time was 10.848 seconds. Um, whereas again, at the beginning of the episode, it was a full two minutes slower, 130 seconds. So this is so much faster. Um, and I think that's just really awesome. And again, shows the benefit of going through and doing benchmarking and comparing different things when 
speed and performance is really of an issue. I'm really happy with how this all turned out. Um, and I think uh, what we've found in the last couple of episodes, at least, is that by refactoring our code, we can we can optimize the space, the storage in RAM. We can optimize the speed. Um, are there other things that we might try? Sure. We talked about other ways of storing the data. Uh, one of the things we'll do in the next episode is actually start thinking about how we're actually going to classify an unknown sequence. And so we're going to have to start working with this Kamer database. And so maybe there's going to be things about searching the Kamer database that will force us to try a different approach. I don't know. I'm just... I'm just a worry wart, but we'll see. But because we've done all this benchmarking along the way, we'll have those tools, that bit of information in our back pocket if we need to pivot and go in a different direction so that you don't miss that awesome next episode. Please make sure you subscribe to the channel and we'll see you next time for another episode of Code Club.